Hello and welcome to Turning Point by Timely Coffees. My name's Seb, I'm one of the co-founders here. And this is a video series we use to talk about different aspects of the coffee industry and kind of how we approach them at Timely. One thing we spoke about a few weeks ago was the idea of coffee freshness. You know, someone asked, you know, is our coffee roasted fresh to order? And we said, you know, what our kind of standards are in terms of aging and what we believe is, you know, adequate in terms of coffee freshness. But it's important to understand, you know, why we have these expectations as consumers and as an industry, why we're kind of adhering to them as well. And, you know, what it really means in terms of what we're perpetuating and, you know, what we're encouraging from our customers. So to go back, you know, a couple of years when, you know, coffee was first served in the way that it really is now in terms of like in cafes and in restaurants, coffee freshness was never really a thing. You know, so coffee was roasted generally a couple of times a year, kept in really big warehouses and just sent out to cafes and restaurants all around the world. And, you know, no one really considered whether or not the coffee was roasted fresh or not. It was similar to other dry goods, kind of like cereals and flour and, and things of that nature. You know, the idea of freshness was not really seen as an important factor in quality. And then, you know, some things start to happen, especially in Seattle in America. And uh, David Shoma is someone who's seen to be as kind of at the forefront of this in a lot of ways. And, you know, there's no real evidence for this, but anecdotally, David Shoma of Espresso Vivace is sometimes credited with the idea of, you know, fresh roasted coffee. Uh, one of the first people to say, you know, to their provider, can you please give me coffee roasted, you know, within certain dates or not, you know, like a year old. And this did a few things for the industry. It made people really consider the idea that the coffee that we're serving is based around the product that we are actually creating the coffee from. So the beans that we're using have the potential to make great coffee if they themselves are great as well. So this is obviously a huge step forward in terms of creating great coffee that we have today. And we would never be where we are without it. But it also did something else, and that was the idea that, you know, we as coffee roasters could encourage people to demand coffee that was a certain age, which meant that if it was not that age, if it was too old, those people felt like maybe they had to throw the coffee away. So this created the idea of, you know, in a lot of industries, this is called, you know, planned obsolescence. This is the idea that you create a product that you know is going to break in about a year because you want that person to buy it a year later and have to replace it. So this is the exact same thing that kind of happened with coffee. We created this idea of freshness because we wanted better tasting coffee. But then we created these standards that were really unattainable. And then what happened was we encouraged people to end up wasting a lot of coffee they really didn't need to. And it's not that, you know, coffee that is, you know, one day old or seven day old or seven days old or 10 or 30 tastes better or worse. It's that, you know, coffee, like a lot of these products, has a life cycle. You know, when it's roasted yesterday, it's going to taste a certain way. And then in 10 and 15 and 30 days time, it's going to taste a little bit different. And, you know, sometimes it's going to be more towards your preference at a certain age and sometimes not. But the idea that, you know, coffee is, you know, 15 days old and I have to get rid of it or it's, you know, it's 30 days old and I have to get rid of it is, you know, just not the case. We really need to be, you know, tasting these coffees and deciding whether or not, you know, we actually enjoy them and, you know, not just going on what we've heard from other people or heard throughout the industry. Really, the idea of freshness has to be, you know, in line with what we expect from our product, expect from our coffee, both in terms of quality, but also sustainability. So if we really love the taste of coffee, or maybe we get to a certain point and we think that it's not as good, we have to decide, is it worth throwing it in the bin? Because this coffee was, especially in terms of timely, you know, comes from the other side of the world. It was handpicked by a human being in most cases. It was processed really intentionally. It was dried with care. It's come so far and through so many different hands and everyone has had such an impact on making it taste as good as it possibly can. When it comes here to, you know, a consuming country, it's roasted and then delivered. And then, you know, 15 days later, it's like, well, you know, it's too old for me. It just goes in the bin. Kind of puts all of that hard work to waste. So don't get me wrong. There is a point when coffee is going to taste not great. You know, maybe it's, you know, it's going to take quite a while. But, you know, we really need to think about whether or not the ideas we have of freshness are relevant and are important to what we want to achieve both in the industry and also environmentally. So that's what we have to say here at Timely. 
Um, everything is just about you know trying to taste the coffee first and really coming up with your own standards about freshness. So that's what we have from Turning Point today. We'll have another video coming out very soon. And for more content like this, we've got it on the YouTube channel and the blog. Thanks very much.